cry tonight, but um, it is emotional. My father's in the hospital, and my husband's away, so I'm just alone <clears throat> with children, so that's always fun. And uh, I'm doing this video just because, um, hi Shelly, thanks for watching. I'm doing this video because cravings. Hi Helen, how are you guys? Thank you so much for watching. I want to talk about cravings and why we crave certain foods. Why do we have this kind of need for craving? Um, so I think it's a really important area because sometimes you don't even know why you like walk over to the to the kitchen or you walk over to your refrigerator and why you open the refrigerator and why you take things out and eat them and you're just like, I don't even know why I did that. It's because you have cravings, right? So there's there's ways to look at cravings and sort of start to deconstruct cravings. So that's part of it. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about that. My name is Vera Ventura, if you don't know who I am. And I used to be a teacher, so I love teaching. So I do this just for fun. I really just enjoy teaching people. And I used to be a high school teacher. Hi, Lisa, how are you? I used to be a high school teacher. I was actually a high school teacher for about eight years and I did my master's in education and I was teaching filmmaking, right? And filmmaking is a very cool art, but it doesn't really get at the soul of a person, right? So that's when I transitioned into the more health and wellness field. I still love filmmaking, but health and wellness is really my calling and really something that I'm very passionate about, right? So passion speaks boundaries and speaks incredible levels and it just infiltrates out of your soul and it can just um, fill your happiness. You know, it just makes me really happy. So whether I get paid or I don't get paid, I love teaching. So let's talk about cravings, right? So, hi Regina, how are you? Do you have cravings? <laughs> hi Ferris, do you have cravings? Yes, we all have cravings. Um, it's important messages for your, for your body, right? To understand that, you know, you, you, saw, you want something, right? Um, but when you are craving a particular food, yes, what kind of cravings do you have, Regina? What kind of cravings? Yes, of course, Shelly. So cravings are one of the ways that our bodies communicate what we need to be healthy, right? And regardless of what the craving is for, most often the root can be attribu attributed uh, uh, to one of the primary causes, one of these primary causes, causes. So the first one is dehydration. So if you're, if you're thirsty, which means I should probably drink some water. Oh, hey, hi, welcome to my class, Miss Peterson. Uh, yes, Shelly craves chocolate. So one reason why you have cravings is dehydration, right? So when you're dehydrating, you're more often to crave things. Okay, lifestyle. All right, that's another one. Ancestry, that's, that's interesting. Lack of nutrients, that's why it's really important to have supplements. Hormones, I bet you didn't know that, hormones. And self-sabotage, should say that again, self-sabotage. I sound really happy when I say self-sabotage. Um, so I'm gonna talk a little bit about that. So let's drink up, talk about drinking water. Um, water is basically, um, needed for all the cells of your body, as well as the maintenance for your bodily functions. Hi, Jeff Parker. Um, you lose water through breathing, sweating, and digestion, and your, um, your body doesn't even send the I'm thirsty signal until you are 2% dehydrated. And that's where the confusion comes in. Um, dehydration can occur as mild hunger, if not addressed, and can manifest in um, being a I need to eat everything hunger. So even when you're dehydrated, your body won't recognize it until you are 2% dehydrated. And then you're gonna start to want to eat. And you don't even know why you wanna eat. You're just freaking dehydrated. So freaking drink some water, okay? <laughs> Hi, Jean. Um, so dehydration is a cause of cravings, right? So that's pretty simple, right? So just drink more water. Um, the next one is your lifestyle, looking at your personal life, as aspects of your life, right? Um, so where are you not feeling satisfied? I mean, this is something we all logically know. Hi, Brenda, say hi. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's awesome, I, I'm so glad you're, Jeffrey, you are always very um, health conscious. <laughs> 
Um, so another reason why we have cravings is because of stuff going on internally, right? So this is pretty obvious. So when your life is messed up, generally you go to something outside of yourself for fulfillment, okay? And you can b disagree or not or agree or disagree, but it's pretty obvious. I mean, when you're lacking something, when you just broke up with a girlfriend, or you're fighting with your partner, or your kids are driving you freaking crazy, um, you want to escape from that feeling that's, discom that's uncomfortable, and the cravings start to elicit, like in your head, and you're thinking, I want this, and I want that, and I want chocolate, and I want pizza, and I wanna stuff my face with um, whatever, X, Y, Z. Hi, Randy, how are you? Do you have cravings? Okay, so here are some questions you can ask yourself. One, are there areas in my life that are not fulfilling me? Okay, that's number one. Number two, do I regularly feel supported, respected, and loved? And number three, what can I do to fur further evaluate the way I am feeling? So it's good for reflection. That's another way you can reduce your cravings. Now, this is very interesting. Ancestry plays a, a, a big part of your cravings. There is a research emerging on um, how the events our ancestors experience um, affect our health today, right? So did you always have uh, food that followed you as a child from your childhood? When you were a child, did you have foods that um, really uh, drew you to them, right? For me, what, what I was drawn to as a child was sugar. <laughs> hi, Kimberly. Hi, Ray. Um, I also was drawn to um, like cookies and crackers and things like that because in my childhood household, Sweets were the devil, right? Everyone was on a diet. I grew up in Miami, all right, and in the 80s, and it was all about how you looked. It was all about like how fit you are and being on a diet. And so we were obsessed with diets, right? We are obsessed with diets. So we would not have anything bad in the house, right? So my, my mom of origin, my father of origin, my sister of origin, we all live in the same house, all crazy about food right? Obsessed, 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 right? How many of you guys can relate to that? You don't have to tell me if that's too personal, but I'm just going to tell you because I'm just being open, all right? So it was really um, a place where I started becoming obsessed, but we did not allow bad things in the house, which is really interesting because then when we went outside of the house, when we went to restaurants, that's when we would eat the food. So that doesn't make any sense, right? So we wouldn't have the bad food in the house, but if we had it outside of the house, then that was okay. So that's a little weird. So when I was inside the house, I would crave those things. And when I would go to my friends' houses, I would just like go crazy and raid their, their cabinets. And I'd be like, <laughs> do you have like ice cream? <laughs> it's because I was, I was denied it, right? So when I was denied it, because of how I was raised, I just wanted more. And the cravings just started coming up and cutting up, come up. And we would buy healthy food, but no one would eat it actually. Like I just remember salad being rotten in my fridge and being like, no one ate salad, right? Because we all wanted to eat the sugar in the flour. And this was also the, the, the time when there was like the sugar-free, do you remember that? Sugar-free, fat-free, like all the snack wells and all that. That just created more of a craving. Um, so foods that we have pos uh, positive associations with from our childhood can also uh, re-enter our lives in the form of cravings. So maybe it was a favorite family meal or a special snack that you were allowed only on holidays. So it's, it's, very, it's very common for people to follow that into their adulthood. And so the best way to satisfy these cravings is to recreate them with a healthy alternative, right? So do you have any cravings that followed you down from your family, tree, or childhood? Hi, Jennifer. All right, we're talking about cravings. Jennifer, do you have any cravings that have followed you down your family tree or your childhood? That's a question. Question I ask all of you, is there a cravings? All right. Another reason why people have cravings is um, the seasons, right? The seasons change and things happen in our body, right? Our bodies are very in tune with nature. 
um, more often than we give them credit for. So some common cravings in according to seasons include summer. Oh, nice, homemade, homemade ice cream. That was from your, from your childhood, Jada? Homemade ice cream. I can feel you, sister. I can see why you would still want that. Um, so summer, uh, people generally uh, crave cooling foods, like as Jada said, homemade ice cream, um, like raw vegetables and ice cream. So there's alternatives. So you can have raw vegetables, which are very cooling, or ice cream. Which one do you prefer, right? Oh yes, every 4th of July on your aunt's birthday. Yes, I feel the same way. I just want to go back to the childhood thing. My grandma made, <clears throat> Every time after I went swimming in her pool, I think I went, I went swimming for like hours and hours and hours, okay? And then I'd come upstairs and she would just put a big tray of cookies in front of me and I would just, I would just go crazy. I'd go crazy with cookies. Because as I said before, my family restrict uh, sweets so much that when I went anywhere else, I just went, I went crazy. And I was a chubby, I was a chubby child that got made fun of. And so that was a result of that cravings. Okay, spring is a time for detoxifying foods like leafy greens and citrus fruits. Fall is a time of grounding foods like squash and nuts. And winter is hot fatty foods like meat and oil. So have you ever experienced seasonal cravings? That's a question I have for you guys. There's also cozy cravings, you know, this like idea of being cozy. Um, <clears throat> So again, our bodies are incredibly accurate machines. Inadequate nutrition produces cravings for specific things depending on what is needed. So caffeine is a big one, right? It's also very addictive. The, the body, get this, this is really interesting. The body only truly craves caffeine when it's not getting enough energy, energy from nutritional sources. I'm gonna say that again because that's a really important point. Hi, Pamela, say hi. I miss you at booty. Hi, Jeanette. I'm gonna say that one more time. The body only truly craves caffeine when it is not getting enough energy from nutritional sources, all right? I want you guys to keep saying that. Hi, Joanna. I'm gonna say it one more time because I'm becoming I'm becoming that teacher that you don't like. <laughs> I'm like a high school. I'm going back to my high school teaching because I like repeat things many many times because my students a lot of them were on my on cell phones and stuff. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, I'm on my cell phone, right? Um, the body only truly craves caffeine when it's not getting enough energy from nutritional sources, okay? So the same can go for minerals like salt, potassium, and calcium. So that is why, hi Kendra. So that's why it is really important to have good supplements so you don't crave caffeine. So I have not had caffeine uh, regularly in 14 years. And part of that is because I have rigorous um, supplement, I have a supplemental regimen. So my body is not craving, okay? It's not craving, hi Kayla, hi Sarah. It's not craving minerals. When your body wants caffeine, it's craving other things like that it needs, right? So the cause of cravings usually produces the ones that we consider out of the ordinary for what we are looking to eat. So this is a really good opportunity to refine the communication we have with our bodies. Try to assess what might be missing. So remember, when you are craving caffeine, it's, it's because you're not getting enough energy from nutritional sources. I personally do not feel like I ever need caffeine because my body has so much energy all the freaking time. Like my body has so much energy, I cannot shut it off sometimes. Like last night, I felt like I had just drank like four cups of coffee because I taught two classes of yoga and I came home and I had like a really good night and, and hey Jan, and then I couldn't put myself to sleep because it was a natural high. And then when you're, when you're drinking coffee, um, you're, supple you're, you're reducing that natural high because you're supplementing it with an unnatural high. So if you do not have supplements, you should talk to me about that, okay? I take these every day. These are my doTERRA ones, Lifelong Vitality. You can message me at some point after this. Okay, moving on, wacky hormones. All right, I'm gonna say that again. Wacky hormones are a reason why you have cravings. So this is for men and women, okay? Everyone has hormones. 
I love it when we think of hormones. We're like, just women, just women. Hi, Jessica. Hormones are special chemical messengers that play a major role in bodily functions. We have over 50 types of hormones. Did you know that? 50 types of hormones? When we are in proper balance, hormones help the body thrive, but either excess or deficiency can trick the body pretty easily. Hi, Chris, thanks for watching. It is also referred to digestion. Of course, as hormone cravings can be some of the most unique cravings, right? In other words, they can produce cravings for food you've never liked before. How weird is that, okay? So, so this, for anybody who's had a baby, Okay, <laughs> I'm so, so Chris, doesn't apply to you, but anybody who's had a baby, you know, hi Kelsey, that when your hormones are all freaking all over the place, all freaky deaky all over the place, that you are craving things that you had no idea you wanted, right? So let's apply that to just, you know, your time of the month, right? And you're craving chocolate and you're craving what else ice cream or all these things that you're like i don't usually crave these things it's because your hormones are all over the place so your hormones can produce those cravings i remember when i was pregnant what did i crave white rice white rice so let me know what were you craving when you were pregnant i'm sure it was pretty wild and if it wasn't wild then that's okay too okay next moving on so the last thing is goodbye to self-sabotage so de-evolution or sometimes referred to as self-sabotage syndrome means that when things are going well, we begin to crave things that send us into an imbalance. The first craving creates another in response to the balance of the first one. So self-sabotage syndromes cause cravings with the main goal of backtracking. They often happen as a result of low blood sugar or a combination of other causes, okay, that I had mentioned before. However, we can choose not to give into the cycle by ensuring we are properly hydrated, as I talked about, holistically nourished, and nutritionally balanced. So the, th so the main ways to avoid the craving cravings are one, hydrated, okay? Yeah, iced coffee, yeah. So hydration is really important. Two, having positive thoughts about yourself, no matter what the situation, right? Because so when we're in a bad place, we're more likely to go to those cravings. So hydration, num numero uno, dos is feeling, having good feelings about ourselves. Three, do you remember that, what that one was? I'm gonna go back to it because I'm having a blank up too, is the ancestry. So thinking about your childhood and what were the foods associated with your happy place, right? So if you grew up in a different culture, right? So um, if you grew up on like rice and beans that your grandmother, your little like abuelo made for you, right? Rice and beans might be your craving place of warm and comfort, right? So thinking about your ancestry, right? Jada talked about how homemade ice cream was her her thing of her childhood, so she craves that. Is is it brings her back to a warm and comfortable place, right? Seasonal changes affect your cravings. Lack of nutrients. So that was a really big point. Was that when you crave coffee, it's because your body is actually deficient in nutrients. So you need a good supplement. Um, hormones play a huge role in your cravings, and then self sabotage, which is a little bit more involved and takes a little unpacking. So yeah, those are, that is, you know, it's a lot of information there. Um, so, you know, the question is ask yourself what resonates with you? Um, where can you make some changes? I think first to start drinking more water, you know? Um, so let's talk about the different categories, okay? We crave sweet, salty, bitter, pungent, spicy, creamy, crunchy, moist, dry, light, heavy things, right? Um, think about what you crave the most. I like crunchy things, all right? I was a smoker for a long time, all right? Hi, Alexis. I smoke cigarettes, and I loved having things, you know, the constant like this, right? And then when I tried to quit smoking, it was like taking this giant weight off of my face, and I didn't know what to do with my hands. <laughs> So I love that like constant eating. So that's why they say when people sometimes stop smoking, they tend to gain weight because they need that oral 
fixation, right? In their mouth, on their mouth. So I crave things that are crunchy, right? You might crave something that's completely different, like salt or sweet or bitter or moist or dry or light. So think about how that is. The sweet tooth is something that is uh, very common in so many people. But when digested, sugar turns into fuel or better known as glucose. The rate at which sugar is converted, however, depends on what kind of sugar is consumed. This is why white refined sugar, so processed sugar in like baking goods and cookies, acts very differently in your body versus nutrient dense sweet vegetables or sugars found in fruit. That's why personally, I don't eat white sugar because it doesn't really do much for you. It converts to fat and it doesn't give you energy. So why would you do that? It's do- it doesn't benefit you. So if you do crave sugar, crave, crave, try just an apple, right? There's, it's a very sweet, it's a very sweet thing. I mean, come on, an apple, it's a freaking apple. It's God's gift, right? If you don't believe in God or whatever it is out there, like Adam and Eve, that was like the foundation, right, of the Bible. (laughs) And she ate an apple and it was like the destruction of mankind. I mean, it goes back because that apple was so freaking good. And that snake was like, eat that apple, eat that apple. And she's like, I can't resist. I need that apple. An apple can be so beautiful if you just stop eating sugar. When you taste an apple, it is like will blow your mind. You'll be like, whoa. Whoa. And literally, that's how I feel now when I eat fruit. Fruit is so incredibly satisfying because I, ha- I don't eat refined sugar, right? So you're not tricking your body and your brain and your tongue into, th- into the synthetic crap that is processed to make you want more. It's so addictive. It's super addictive. So when these cravings strike, it's important to feed your body Um, sugar that digests slower and is paired with healthy amount of fiber, okay? So some examples include sweet potatoes. So when you have those sugar cravings, go for sweet potatoes. They actually taste really sweet. Carrots, beets, beets are so sweet. Beets are so sweet. There should be a shirt that says beets are so sweet. Okay, and winter squash. Winter squash is really sweet. And so try these yummy vegetables before going straight to the cake and see if they satisfy your sweet tooth, all right? As you go into the Memorial Day weekend and you're at that barbecue, think about it. Okay, now, people crave salty stuff. Salty cravings are a really good example of your body communicating what it needs um, as its minerals. Oh, sorry, ah, my feet hurt, okay. Um, Salty cravings are a really good example of your body communicating what it needs as it is a mineral our bodies truly need, right? So salt helps us maintain proper fluid balance, blood pressure, and nerve signals. Did you know that? Nerve signals? Signals? To feed this craving, your body needs more nutrition, right? So skip the processed food and indulge in healthy alternatives. So salting roasted veggies with high quality sea salt is a way to curb those cravings and provide the body with 60 trace minerals. If trips or ch- if chips are your go-to and you know specifically talking about Memorial Day, try some baked kale chips. Um, they're salty and easy to make and let me know if you want the recipe, I can send it to you. But you can also look that up. Kale chips, right? All right. So Go for the greens. So it can be concluded concluded that craving bitter foods represent potential digestive issues because bitter foods actually aid in healthy digestion and detoxification. So um, see that connection there? Healthy bitter foods include dark leafy greens like mustard greens, um, arugula, kale, and collards. These foods naturally help eliminate blockages in the digestive tract. So next time you crave something bitter, pass up the coffee and beer and go for some greens, all right? Greens. All right, there's a lot of different alternatives here and I'm just gonna go to the creamy or crunchy part. So the mouthfeel of your food can be a topic of cravings, right? So creamy cravings may be a sign that you are eating too many dry foods like breads and baked products. Whereas crunchy cravings may be trying to balance out the milk or oily foods in your diet. So thinking about that, 
moisture dry. Okay, let's see, heavier light foods. So deconstruct your cravings. Um, forbidding yourself from foods can cause cravings to get worse, but always giving in to them can also mi miscommunicate your body's needs. To break the cycle, you must deconstruct what you are craving and find healthy alternatives that will satisfy you. And remember, the body does not make mistakes. It's all about balance. So I hope this has helped you. Please um, send me a personal message. My, my email address is vera at voraciousheeling.com. Hi, Lisa. I'm just talking about cravings. I'm wrapping up now. So vera at voraciousheeling.com. Please message me um, if you wanted any in more information about cravings and deconstructing cravings. Also, as I mentioned before, your body craves um, energy through caffeine when it's not getting energy elsewhere in nutrients and minerals. So having a really great supplement is really important. So please message me if you'd like to learn more about uh, the supplement that I use, which is from doTERRA, which is incredible. It's called Lifelong Vitality. And literally, I do not need caffeine. I run on so much energy, and um, that's what you want, right? You want energy without having to use something, right? And thinking like, I am a slave to my coffee. I am a slave to my sugar. This is, this is the foundation of it, right? Also, drink lots of water, get enough rest, and, and look at yourself, look at your history, your ancestral cravings, and um, no self-sabotage, okay? So thank you so much, namaste guys, have a great Memorial Day, and I'll talk to you soon, bye.